Welcome everyone, thank you for taking the time to tune in. Now we're on day 19, so I'll get it open and we'll kick the day off. Oh mysterious one, reveal yourself. Oh, it's like Christmas day. Oh, it's the other nutcracker. Nice of you to join us. Right, you can go and stand with your friend. Say hello to everyone. Hello. <laughs> so there you have it. What an amazing array of goodies. Can't wait. So today I think I'll do some more work on this. I've got to do some repairs on the top. Give it a, a light waxing. This is a recent purchase I've made. Fabulous carving. I think I'll put some gilding on it as well. Let's bling it up a little bit for Christmas. So yeah, I'm gonna do some work on that. And maybe some uh, some other restoration on some other items I have, so. Right, let's get cracking. So to polish it, I'm gonna use this natural beeswax and it's got lavender from Jersey. So it's really, really nice this one, smells beautiful. So we'll get that on it, we'll do a bit of gilding. Yeah, I'm not sure whether this is gonna end up in my Etsy shop or not, I really like this. We'll see. It's on a block of wood. I believe maybe the carving is a lot older than the block of wood. But sometimes I used pine to mount these figures on and put gesso and painted them up. It's fabulous detailing. Nice bit of carving that. He was a skilled artisan. So I'll take it outside. I'll probably set up a little workshop under me barn and uh, if it rains it won't affect us and I understand it's a very very busy time of year for everyone so thanks for taking the time to watch my vlogs you know it really has helped and uh, hope to carry on entertaining you who knows what the new year is going to bring not such a bad day out here today there's a little bit of drizzle and I think it's time I clean out underneath the outside of the A-framed barn. Bit of a dumping ground at the moment for me tools, scaffolding, so I'm gonna get that cleared, make a nice bench in there so I can do some work. So I'm just gonna start clearing out all this, um, get a scaffold set up underneath there, only as a, a workbench, and I think I'll use this white sheet to go around the outside, just as a temporary cover just in case it starts raining hard, just to keep us dry inside, until I get it cladded properly. So just make do with what we got at the moment. At least I can carry on working and doing my projects. So let's get clearing. So I better go and find some more battens. Once I put the plastic around, I'm just gonna put some temporary battens on the outside and that'll just stop the wind just up there and up there and then round here as well only temporary until i'll get that cladding on as you've noticed everything has died back winter is definitely here and there's a chill in here so i wouldn't rule out a white christmas oh, here's a few links We'll get us started. It's always nice to use up what you've got. I've got plenty of little stashes everywhere. I'm like a magpie. I hide it up and then forget about it. Well, actually, it's probably more like a squirrel because they forget about it and then uh, little walnut trees grow. So, that would be nice and snug in there with me blanket round the barn. Get me a little fire in there. You're well away. So I've got some more battens. Got some cut nails. Let's get going. idea well it doesn't look very pretty but I'm sure it's very 
practical for what I need, keep me dry, keep the wind out. It's a little bit dirty because I dragged it all through the mole hills. Couldn't be helped, it'll wash off. And here we go. My temporary workshop. That'll do. And it's got a penthouse. Let's have a look upstairs. Not been up here for a while, hope to return soon. Oh yeah. Nice and dry up here. Brilliant. Just somewhere to work in the dry. Still not a bad view, is it? So, welcome to the new temporary workshop. I say temporary, that can cover anything between two weeks and ten years. But no, honestly, I'll, uh, I will be starting this in the new year. I want to get it clad. I've got some windows to go in. I've got to sort the floor out. Gonna get some benches in here. So it was meant to be a multifunctional space, really, just so we can come and sit outside when it's raining and uh, have fires. Open a roof up on a clear sky. Those of you that don't know about this barn, the roof, I've designed it so it opens up both sides so we can sit up there and gaze at the stars. Okay, cup of tea, warm up, and let's get renovating. So let's take this to the new workshop. So, what we're going to do, we're gonna find some glue. We're gonna glue down here, put a fixing in there, and then straighten that up. And once that's set, I'm gonna give this a light wax and maybe some gilding around the edges. What a fabulous item. It's gotta be several hundred years old. So, I've got me glue. Now this is tight bond free. This is probably one of the best you can use. Interior, exterior, it's a really good glue. So, what the plan is, is to open this up a little bit more, get some glue down there, a couple of nails in here, and that should hold it in place. That's the theory, let's see whether it works. Here goes. As you can see, a measured amount. Highly technical. It's not flowing that freely because it's so cold. So we've opened the joint up. I'll let that get down into the crack. The nail will hold most of the joint together anyway, but this is just helping it along. Ease its way down. A little bit more in the end here. Don't want to waste too much. It's about 40 euros a pot. I've actually bought this to make me butcher's block, so I shall be doing videos on that as well in the new year. So we've got plenty in the joint now. I think if I just clamp that, that would hold it, so I'm pretty confident it's going to work. Got me nails. Could have used a screw, but that means I'd have had to fill it on the top and then colour it up. I think with a bit of wax on the nail, that would be more authentic. So, I'll get it nailed, clamped if needed. That can be set in. And while I was over there getting the clamps, I remembered that I spoke about this before. Now this is a very rusty, but very useful extending trivet. Both sides come apart, so you can put a long pot on there or just a kettle or something like that. So we're gonna give that a rub down and some uh, great polish on there as well. I'm a busy boy today. Here goes. Pleased with that. I'm going to just wipe the excess off with a damp cloth in a moment. Better to have too much in there than not enough. Now that nail has almost disappeared, which is what I was after. 
let's just make sure yep it's not going to split nothing another one in there now I'm hoping there's not too much vibration for the camera when you're starting off nails nice and gently to get it in straight the further it goes down the harder you can hit it watch out for your fingers So let's see whether you can see the nails. Apart from the glue, you wouldn't know any different really. I mean, once I get some wax on it, it's there and there. They're the old ones. So we get that wiped off, get this waxed up, bit of gilding. So before the glue sets, damp sponge, and just wipe it off. It's a lot easier than sanding it out. It hasn't got to be perfect because if it was perfect, it wouldn't match because everything else is a little bit rustic. That's great. Just give that a dry off. While that bit's drying, I'll start waxing up the figure. Now what you'll find with a lot of these carved figurines is the expensive wood, the hardwood, is done out of the figure because of its ability to be able to be carved crisply. And then, the other material is sometimes pine and a lesser expensive wood, you know, makes sense. So this would have been painted and gilded. So let's get some wax on this young dashing chap here. Make him, make him look good. Bring him back to his former glory. So, our natural beeswax polish with some Jersey lavender. That's good. Apply that with a brush, soft brush, get in all the crevices, and then we'll buff it off. Oh, getting a little low on that. Right, I'll use this very carefully then. That's solid. Ooh. Shows you how cold it is. You anyway, know, we don't need much. Just sort of work it in. To feed the wood as much as anything, stop it drying and splitting. I wonder how many people he's gazed down upon over the years, probably in a church. Brilliant. We'll let that dry and buff him up. Probably take it indoors because it's a bit cold and damp out here. Right, let's get this smoothed over, ready to accept the gilding. So the glue's nice and dry. Some wax on the top. Now if you like these sort of videos with restoration and repairs, I shall be doing a few of these in the new year. It'd be a constant theme, so it's not all about travelling and sightseeing. I do like staying at home and doing projects and work. My love isn't just for copper. It's for anything that's really well made. Handmade normally. Just great quality always speaks to me, so keep an eye out in my shop because there'll be wooden things, there'd be enamel things, there'd be anything of quality, you know. Um, as much as I love copper, I'll always carry on buying copper, but I do buy other things as well, so. Yeah, right. This is nearly ready for the gilding. So just a light buff up. Now when you're gilding anything, you don't need to use a lot. Less is the key with this. I normally put it on with a brush, just a a little dab and just a highlight I'm not going to touch the figure I'm just going to do the pine which is the the framework really so just gonna just lightly brush and rub it back a little bit afterwards if you feel you've done too much And a little bit on those nails.
what you don't want is what I've just done there is put too much on in one go and probably knock that back a little bit with some fine wire wool and a bit of wax that will do and what you have to think of is where the natural wear would occur on the corners so I'll apply this gilding and I'll get some fine wire wool and just knock it back a little bit which means just take the, the sharpness off of the colour. I think originally it would have all been gold, not the carving. The cheaper coloured wood. So with a little bit of wire wool into the wax and then just carefully what we call knocking back the colour which means minimising it really and making it blend in and look natural so I'll give that a once over with the wire wall and the wax give it a polish up and that little project is complete and just slowly blend the colour in you can always add a little bit more if you take too much off not a problem. Smooths the wood as well, gives it a lovely finish. So, what do you think? It's come out okay, hasn't it? That's great. Give that a polish up. Put that to one side. If only my copper was that easy to polish up. <laughs> well, I've bought a, a really good machine, so I'm going to be doing some polishing on there as well. Get some copper pots and pans out. Right, let's put this to one side. On to my next little project, and it is an extendable cast iron trivet. Let me show you how it works, like so. You want an oblong pot or something longer and there it comes so we're going to clean this up got my glasses can't find me dust mask but never mind i'm outside so wire brush and also for the z bright we call it z bright or black lead or great polish it's just a black graphite um, polish i'll show you that in a moment so we'll get this rubbed down and then we'll go on to the next stage. So, remove all the loose rust and crud. And this one gets in a little bit better. Delicate areas. Repeat the same for the other end. So this is the before, and this is the after. And I think you'll agree, it's a lot better start seeing the detail in the casting and then here it just gets lost that's great let's do the other side and then uh, we'll apply some black grape polish so I've cleaned it with a wire brush and now you can start seeing all of the detailing in the casting which is great we'll get that back on the bench we'll get some black grape polish on it watch the transformation oh it's getting chilly now so when you use this black graphite it stains your fingers so always wear some gloves okay let's get going I'll do it so that you can see one half done before and after that's my plan you don't need too much of this in one go so I'll apply it with a paintbrush first stipple it on if you're doing it on a surface you don't want to get this on I suggest you use some newspaper or a rag because it's very very mucky wow look at this always so pleasurable bring something back to life like this I shall be using this at Christmas that's why I've chosen to do it now so we work that in all the gaps 
stipple it in. Let that dry. It's not ready for buffing yet, but I think you'll agree the transformation is pretty self evident. Look at that. So let's get the other side done. Not so important underneath, just to stop it from rusting. Do all around the edges. Now for the bigger brush. No, it's not speeded up, I really do work this fast. There you go. So I'll take that indoors, uh, let it dry off in there because it's too damp outside. Probably take about an hour. I'll show you once I buff it up. Yeah. And with this black grate, uh, polish it, it doesn't look like it's brand new it gives it a nice antique finish so it's well worth using on bare sort of metal like this you know you get a, a really good uh, really good finish on it so I'll get that buffed up and I'll show you when I'm doing it so we give it a quick buff up gloves on socks are always optional gives it that period period look doesn't look too bright or too new. Just wipe off the excess. So yeah, very worthwhile little project. Pleased with that. So if you like this sort of thing, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sure you have. There's be lots more of this to come in the new year. So there, what do you think? Not bad, is it? So it really does pick out the detail now. It's a little bit rubbed in places, but I like it like that. That's not a problem. So, well worth doing. That is it from me, from a cold Normandy garden. Come back tomorrow on day 20. Checking out now on day 19. Bye for now.